What's up guys, this is Mike Loris, and I'm going to be bringing you the next set from the, Pro the Premier League Season 4. This is going to be between Mouse Sports on the Radiant and Virtus Pro on the Dire. That's actually a little bit loud, let's lower that. So both these teams, extraordinarily solid. Mouse Sports uh, pretty much crushed through their group in the defense, and uh, VP no slouches either. The band's looking pretty normal, and with Mouse Sports first picking the Gyrocopter, that'll let VP pick up both the Wisp and the Darks here. Both of those heroes typically are banned. And Mouse, well, uh, I mean, both those heroes typically are banned, but then picked up by the, uh, by the Radiant side first. But Mouse Sports instead, heavily favoring that Gyrocopter, who usually uh, isn't picked until the circuit second pick uh, area, you know, the 2-3 or uh, third slot right there. So VP already starting the game off with the Wisp, who is pretty Ten much banned out 100% of the time. Uh, just a, such Five a strong global remaining. hero. And Darks here, of course, one of, if not the best, here that you could put onto that long lane. So VP already starting out very strong with their picks. Mouse Sports with the Gyrocopter. I mean, Gyrocopter is not a bad pick at all. The amount of damage you could put out is absolutely insane. And uh, I guess now we'll see if it's going to be Black playing the Gyrocopter. Black typically is the uh, you know hard carry player for Mouse. Or if they're going to lane the Gyrocopter in a different way and get Black something a little bit more uh, Black-esque, such as a Life Stealer. So, yeah, um, I've actually been having a little bit of trouble with my mic, so that has been not fun at all, and that is why uh, recordings have been, like, not really going very well for uh, the uh, my games, actually, that's what I'm talking about, because my mic gets on, like, cutting out for some reason, but uh, it seems to be okay now, but... I don't know. Hopefully everything will be alright. Mouse Sports, uh, still waiting for their second and third pick. Still a lot of strong heroes in the pool. But they're actually taking a lot of time, and that is G-Talk. I probably should remember to uh, exit out of these programs beforehand. But we'll just wait for Mouse Sports to make a pick, possibly uh, pause this game after the draft, and then we'll shut that down. Our copter already gives Mouse Sports a lot of damage, and they're burning all of their time, actually. Okay, it is going to be the Life Stealer as well as the Rubik. So Mouse Sports picking up those two heroes most likely pushes the Gyrocopter out of that number one spot and Life Stealer into that number one spot. Most likely, oh my god, you have to sh be kidding me. Leave me alone. Alright, so I shut off G-Talk even though I just looked at the recording and well, it actually didn't uh, make any sound, so you can't actually hear it. But it was annoying me, and that's uh, reason enough to pause this game. But of course, it wasn't paused for you guys very long. So, yeah, Life Stealer as well as the Rubik. So Rubik is going to have a good Five deal of uh, stuff to steal just from the Dark Seer. Pretty much anything you steal from the Dark Seer is incredibly valuable. Uh, they will get a lot of uh, support going with that hero. And ooh, even a Bane Elemental from VP. Picking up their support hero very early, along with the Wisp. So VP's support lineup going to be extremely solid. And God damn it! once again, I forgot to shut the door. What is wrong with me today? Holy crap. And, okay. So yeah, Life Sealer, most likely going to be farming that bot lane with the Rubik as support. Gyrocopter, probably going to head towards the mid lane, where VP have yet to really uh, show their hand as far as that goes. Darkseer has been running the mid lane more and more these days, actually. Of course, you can still put him on the long lane, but usually, uh, the as of late, teams have been favoring aggressive tri lanes, and... Aggressive tri lanes with a mid lane usually means that there's not much to, uh, not many things you could do with that other lane. Uh, Darkseer hasn't really been put into the long lane just because the aggressive tri lane is there, so Darkseer usually slides Mouse into the mid lane. Does a decent job there against the Gyrocopter. Uh, I don't know, the Gyrocopter's harassment with Flat Cannon and Rocket Barrage, if Darkseer wants to make anything happen, is going to be incredibly dangerous for him if he does decide to do that. Very smart band coming out from Mouse Sports, banning out the CK, one of the most reliable partners for the Wisp and, v and VP. They still do need their carry hero. So far, all of their heroes are, well, they have the uh, three, four, five slots all sorted out. So they're looking for primary farmers, and uh, primary farmers usually go with Wisp. Well, I, there's the CK ban already, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Mouse Sports also ban out something Ten like a Tiny. Remaining. And aside from that, I mean, Wisp. You can still get a couple of decent remaining. lane partners of, uh, you know, tether combos with the Wisp. And it is going to be the Tiny Ban. VP, on the other hand, they're banning out uh, what seems like tri-lane preparation heroes. 
They already have that Undying added there. Knowing that Life Stealer, Rubick, as well as you know X other support hero, this could be a really dangerous lane. The amount of control and crowd control they get out of that is already pretty astounding with the heroes that they have. They need to add a little bit more damage, possibly a little bit of setup from the Shadow Mouse Demon. Then Mouse Sports also need to pick up them, pick themselves up another support hero or support E hero. So VP going to be focused on those support heroes. Whereas Mouse Sports going to be focused on the carry heroes. Possibly another uh, ban out could be the uh, Tide Hunter. Tide Hunter is actually pretty good against VP's team right now. The Wisp uh, usually wants to stay at the edge of that fight. And if you get a Ravage, then the Wisp is going to really struggle to do so. And Bane Elemental with the Fiend's Grip is also going to be interrupted by uh, the Ravage, which is a pretty good stun to get rid of that. Because even if you're very far away, you. You know, just stomp that Ravage and then no more Fiend's Grip. Mass Sports bending out to Luna and VP, gonna finalize their bans with the Nature's Prophet. Possibly eliminating that solo lane from Mass Sports. And now Mass Sports, what do they want to go for? Uh, probably they will pick up one of their uh, support heroes first. Mid, I'm assuming, is going to be Gyrocopter unless they want to go for something like Queen of Pain. In which case, we might see a uh, solo either Gyrocopter or Lifestealer on the safe lane and then Ten an aggressive tri lane. Remaining won't exactly be out of the realm of possibilities, seeing as though Wisp isn't exactly the strongest uh, offensive tri lane hero. It is going to be the Disruptor pickup from Asports, and VP going to respond with the Puck. Now VP still need their primary hard carry, but Puck is going to be holding down that mid lane, most likely. But yeah, Wisp is not exactly the strongest tri lane hero, uh, aggressive tri lane hero, simply because, well, he's very, very soft. He's a strength hero, but he has no armor. You can tear through him pretty quickly, especially if you get any form of crowd control on him. He could tether away, but usually his tether uh, not available early on for escapes just because of the way the creeps remaining. are moving in the lane. Mouseports with that Disruptor Five pick do have remaining. themselves now a lot of AoE. But static Storm and Calldown is going to be pretty devastating for VP, who are so far very reliant on their spells. So Static Storm from the Disruptor is going to be one of the most useful tools, and well, there you go. Silence also comes out of Doombringer. A very interesting pick from Mouse Boys. Definitely would not have expected them to pick up another hero who needed so much farm and experience to be effective. Now, I believe the last time I saw Doom was... Oh, God, who was it? It was uh, someone... It was, was it Fnatic versus 3D? It was something like that. And Doom went on the hard lane solo. And he was up against another hero solo. And he did, actually did decently. Got a quick Shadow Blade and then was just a Five huge tanky remaining. ganking machine. Juggernaut. And the last pick from VP is going to be the Juggernaut, so that's going to be the combination with the Wisp. Juggernaut-Wisp is a very solid combo as well. You could teleport right onto someone's head, get a Nani Slash, or even just spin him down with that stun. So VP going to pick up the Juggernaut, but uh, the Juggernaut has a lot of heavy lifting to do, because Mouse Ports have a lot of heroes that do a lot of damage, as well as the Silences. Juggernaut I mean, he does do a good amount of right-click damage, but really, his prime is in the early mid-game when his Omni Slash does a lot of flat magic damage and his spin do a lot of the magic damage as well. You know what you can't do when you are... You, you can't spin when you know, you're doomed or you have a static storm on top of you. So the silences from Mouse Sports, a very interesting way to actually pick their lineup, focusing very heavily on those silences, and not so much on the stun. I mean, they have the missile, which... I mean, the missile is great and everything. But usually people don't get many points in the missile. You could even see some games where people don't get the missile at all. They have the telekinesis, yes, and whatever Poss might eat from a creep. But that's as far as it goes, as far as stuns go. So Puck, I mean, usually doesn't have to worry that much if there's no stuns in the other team. But there are plenty of silences, which is uh, dangerous enough. On the VP side, there's going to be Tame My Wild, also known as Crazy, playing that Puck KSI. On the Bane Elemental, NS is going to be playing the Wisp. Airman, hard carrying that Juggernaut as expected. Santa is going to be playing the Dark Seer. On the Mouse Sports lineup, Beta is on that Gyrocopter. Kuroki is going to be playing the Rubik. Oh my god, Rubik, what happened to your head? Wow, it's just completely gone. That's actually really weird. Black is going to be playing the Life Sealer, hard carrying on that bot lane. Atsy supporting him. That, of course, leaves Poss most likely uh, going to gear up to head towards the top lane. Pick up a stout shield, pick up a ring of protection because you need that armor. 3% physical damage resistance, not exactly impressive. But yeah, the mouse sports definitely have it if this game goes to the late game. 
And yes, the enemy team does have a Dark Seer. Making copies of the Gyrocopter, Life Sealer, or even the Doom. Those are very, very tanky copies that'll do a lot of damage. But Airman will need to do a he will need a lot of farm if he wants to really carry VP into the late game. You know, either that or VP could shut it down early. All the heroes that VP have have a very strong early mid game. If they get the towers going, they get the pushing going, then mouse boys don't really have all that much anti push. And what do they have? The disruptor, I guess. One point of thunder strike, Rubik with fade bolt, and a little bit of AOE from the gyrocopter. But really, mouse boys just need a lot of room. And if VP act very aggressively, then they could shut down all the room that Mouse Ports has. Doesn't look like they're actually going to act too aggressively. Black, still on the spot lane, is uh, most likely going to get a lot of free farm. So it's going to be a free farming life stealer versus a free farming juggernaut. Now the juggernaut gets the jump on the life stealer, gets an omni slash going, and that then he will most likely win that fight. Unless Black, of course, has a infest target to go into, save himself some damage there. But the Rage will block out all the damage that comes out of Blade Fury. It's a pretty big spell from the Juggernaut, completely denied. And that is, of course, if he could actually find the time through the silences, through the stuns that Mouse Boy had picked up to actually cast that spell. Theta. Looks like he's actually going to go for the mid lane. Picked up a Wraith Band for a little bit more damage and fed some consumables. So he's looking to hold the mid lane versus probably uh, crazy. Don't see them going for a couple of dual lanes or anything like that. Yeah, KSI and NS just positioning themselves for the rune. The You're getting an ancient block. Hmm. And this ward definitely doesn't see anything. It is for that blocking of the ancient. Still mouse port. They don't really have the best ancient clearing heroes. I guess Gyrocopter is pretty good. They expect the Doom to abandon the top lane, as he is doing right now. Doom might just be looking for a jungle creep, and then he might go up there. It's just going to be Airman free farming. Really, Airman is going to be a very dangerous hero to let free farm. Then again, you know, so is Black. Santa, for now, abandoning that top lane. It's what teams usually do nowadays, Darkseer. He's in a little bit of danger until he gets a couple more levels up. So you put him in the jungle, wait till he gets level 2 or level 3, get a little more Ion Shell, get that safety point in Surge. Then you stick him down on the bot lane, and we saw it in one of the other games, that even though he uh, was delayed a little bit as far as going to that lane, uh, he still had enough to kill the life stealer. So life stealer has to be careful once that happens. Doombringer is going to be jungling for now. I don't even know if Pass could go up to the top lane. Just the amount of stuns and lockdown that VP have up there means that the Doombringer probably would do better just sticking around here. He does have the Devour, we'll have a little bit of regeneration from that uh, Scorched Earth. Not to mention a pretty good aura to pick up on Holy Aura, 4 HP regen. Not bad at all. So top lane, it's just going to be a farm fest. Bot lane, just going to be a farm fest. And Black and, Cra Black and, uh, Black and Airman are both two very solid carry players, so I don't expect them to miss all that many CS, all that much CS. Uh, so really the action is going to come in the mid lane. Kuroki rotating in, looking for Levitate onto Crazy. He's going to find it also right into the Rocket Barrage of Peta, but the Creep Wave, unfortunately, at the perfect timing for Crazy, is going to allow the Puck to survive that. The Creep Wave was like, what, five seconds behind? All the Rockets would have hit onto that Puck. That would have been a lot of damage. That would have been enough for a kill. It's a little bit of unfortunate mistiming from the Mouse side. But hey, good attempt anyway. You burned out the salve from Puck, only uses like, what, two spells? It's a really low investment for pressuring the Puck back very severely. Try to give as much of an edge towards Feta. So although Gyrocopter is being played mid, he can still do a sizable chunk of damage should the late game come. Whereas Puck, you know, he's mostly in the mid game, so in the early mid game, so you expect Puck to do a lot more damage early on and kind of fall off later. You shall not. Whereas Feta will uh, scale pretty evenly. It's one of the benefits of picking up a gyrocopter is scaling is very good. And that's just going to use a couple of his wisp illusions to do uh, pretty much nothing, just bug Kuroki a little bit. But yeah, it looks like we're just going to be waiting until this wisp gets to level 6. Once he has that, most likely going to be a tether up with the air with airmen. Look towards the enemy jungle. 
Try to get some spin ganks off. Possibly an Omni Slash. Uh, definitely an Omni Slash at that point, actually. But until then, both teams content with just farming it up. Let's see how the Dark Seer is actually doing. He is level 3. Soul Ring should be on the way. Feta looking for a kill onto Crazy. He does have a phase shift, though, so the stun isn't going to land. And the Creep Wave comes once again, denying that potential rocket barrage. The Gyrocopter has picked up a bottle, as has Crazy, so they're both going to be chugging that fountain well juice. So far this lane, going a little bit towards the Gyrocopter, a couple more denies, a little bit more CS. Puck, not exactly the strongest of lane controllers, whereas Gyrocopter has that passive harassment. KSI looking for a Nightmare onto the Rubik, he's going to find it, and Rubik, only level 2 now, Airman is going to shred him down. Here comes the Blade Fury, and you are so dead, Rubik. There's the first blood being picked up by Airman. It's really the boots on the Bane Elemental that made the difference there. 340 versus the uh, 365. Even though they do both have boots, a little bit more movement speed and nightmare setup. In the meantime, Gyrocopter picks up Puck solo. Was that solo? I think it was. Puck must have just got caught out uh, without his illusory orb and then Rocket Barrage level 3 now. Yeah, level 3 Rocket Barrage. That'll shred a Puck. So the tower on the top lane does go down. Looks like they don't even want to stop. Is there a Ring of Basilius? There isn't. They do have one point in that healing ward 10 seconds before it's up. They want to keep this siege creep alive. Does a lot of damage to the tower. KSI might also be looking for another opening onto the Rubik. He's the only one here to actually defend this, but he's got to watch out. A nightmare. Ooh, Kuroki playing with fire just a little bit. The healing ward is up, giving this push a little bit more longevity, and another creep wave does arrive. So rotation has to come from Mouse Sports right now if they want to defend this, but it looks like they're okay with letting this fall. There's going to be a lot of gold for Airman. 2,300 gold on him already. This, with this tower down if he gets his last hit. Well, and he has pretty much all the freedom in the world to get whatever item he chooses. Could be a Battle Fury for a little bit more late game. Could be even a fast Shadow Blade. Get a little bit more early aggression on. That would actually be a very good choice for him. Get that fast Shadow Blade. That means that you could pour on the aggression. That means you could end the game earlier. Whereas Battle Fury, it does do a lot of damage, but if you get the Battle Fury, you're usually looking to farm. We now do have rotation coming into this mid lane. And it, Coming out to the top lane, it's going to be the Gyrocopter. Just pressuring back a little bit. Now he's level 6, so he does have that call down. Meantime, bot lane black has picked up his hand of Midas. So he's investing for the late game. Santa has already arrived down in the bot lane with the Soul Ring as well, so the Ion Shell is going to start flying. Black with the hand of Midas with the Infest should it be able to deal with those Ion Shells. So they shouldn't be too annoying. Although, you know, Ion Shells are always annoying. <laughs> All down onto the mid lane. Beta just trying to zone Crazy out, but Crazy saw that one coming. And Atsy just doing the jungling action, pulling, holding the lane for Black. And Doombringer, how's he doing? Level 5, 6 minutes in, not bad jungling on the Doombringer. Not bad at all. He's gonna almost have his uh, level 6. Once he has that, he's going to leave the lane, most likely look towards a kill onto the Puck. Even the Doom itself is. You know, they pretty much kill the Puck straight out just because Puck is such a soft hero and Doom is such a ridiculously powerful spell. Combine that with the power that Feta has right now if he gets a little bit of Rocket Barrage on Crazy. That's a very dead Puck. Pass. Gotta be careful, man. These uh, Hell Bears and Wild Wings do pack a punch. But there's the level 6, so he's gonna pick up Doom. Go to the Fountain. Yeah, go to the Fountain, and then he's gonna pick up Teleportation Scroll. Look for a gank. Really, the only viable gank they see is in the mid lane. Or crazy now has a missile going for him. They're just trying to bait up that phase shift. There's the phase shift, allowing for Rubik to get closer for the telekinesis. Call down is going to demolish Puck's life points. The second missile is going to hit as well. Gyrocopter is going to pick up that kill. Very, very smart play from Mouse. They knew that the homing missile wasn't going to land on Puck. There's really no way you could land a homing missile on Puck. Unless the Puck is, like, you know, brain dead. They just used that to bait out the, uh, to bait out the phase shift. That meant the Puck wasn't moving for that short split second, allowing for Rubik to get close enough for that Levitate. And the call down, Rocket Barrage, and the rest was history. A very solid gank going on to Crazy. That's going to be his second death. So his Treads, his Blink Dagger, going to get more and more delayed. Meantime, Black, going to take a tier 1 tower of his own. Teleportation, uh, Movement Support is going to come in from Atsy, as well as Kuroki. Add a little bit more right-click damage to the creep wave, possibly nuke it down, should it come to that. 
problem is that airman picked up drums as well as phase boots. Not going to go for that shadow blade, at least quite yet. But still getting items that will substantially help his early game. And look at this. Maxing out blade dance for Juggernaut. I would not recommend this in your games because if you're in a pub game, you need that spin. Veda going to find a call down onto KSI. The rockets are going to be enough to kill him. One more right click actually doing the job. Vandal Metal getting glimpsed back, so his corpse only moves. Veda picking himself a free kill. He's going to teleport up to the top lane where Airman's still pushing very aggressively. He has that Omni Slash, which is really all he is invested into right now. Usually you do want the points of Blade Fury. It's been such a fantastic d uh, damage tool. But right now, Juggernaut just used that for the first kill on the top lane, as well as any potential magic resistance. So Juggernaut looking to go straight into the damage roll. KSI going to have his wounds opened up. Nightmare on himself, but Black's going to go right through that. Telekinesis is going to pull KSI a little bit closer, but here comes Airman. Not doing that much damage with the Blade Fury, but he has Kuroki in the corner, so Kuroki is going to drop. So crazy. Chasing down Atsy. He does have a Dream Coil. He wants to use it. There it goes. Atsy's just going to split it right out. But the orb over the top is going to bring him a kill. And now where is Lifestealer? Running away at 15 HP. Santa does have another Surge. He's going to try to chase this one down. Black probably just going to use his Hand of Midas. Oh! Santa got juked out, and here comes past to support. Gone for a hand of Midas of zone. Centaur camp turned completely to gold. Darkseer's gonna try to chase down the Doombringer, but that's not a fight the Darkseer is going to win, or that's not a fight the Darkseer is gonna take. Teleportation support coming from Airman. But yeah, Blade Dance is investing fully into the Omni Slash. Usually you don't see this from pubs just because you want that additional damage from Blade Fury. Juggernaut just wants that magic immunity. He's going to build up into some hardcore damage and then rely heavily on the Omni Slash to take out one target, you know, and then do the crit damage for the next. So we're going to want to we're going to have to keep our eyes on this Juggernaut. He already has one point in stats. So will he actually keep going with stats or will he actually get some He's going to get healing ward later on. But Blade Fury, he might just completely ignore it. Crazy. In a little bit of trouble. The homing missile is going to hit onto Santa. Push from Mouse is going to be thwarted at least for the moment. But mouse sports do have the Doom and they want to use it. Uh, the Doom spell, not the Doom Doom. Kroki taking a sizable chunk of damage right there. Ion Shell doing even more. Looks like Doombring is actually just going to hit the jungle camps one more time. Going to go for his phase boots. Jungling from Doom, relatively successful. Airman being very aggressive with that Yasha, plus drums, plus phase boots. He's moving at pretty much max movement speed. There's the Dream Coil from Puck. He's going to demolish Kuroki. Vayner is trying to stand his ground with his Rocket Barrage. He's going to take out one. Now Airman trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Vayner. The Rocket Barrage is going to come again. The problem is that Creep Wave once again. Crazy is going to try to run away with Doom, but he should be denied if he gets in danger. Looks like he will be fine. NS is going to port him back to the fountain. A little bit uh, unnecessary, I suppose. But Juggernaut is going to find enough time to get an ultra kill onto the Doombringer. Not even using his Omni Slash. He could stick around and kill Kuroki right now if he wanted to. No, he's going to get levitated, and that is going to be it. Unfortunately, couldn't get the jump in time. But they could still get this kill. Puck is going to lose Yuri Orbin. There's the Brain Sap, as well as all the Wisp Spirits. That is going to be five down for Maus. Only one down for VP. That was without the Omni Slash. That was with the Doom, with the Call Down, with the Static Storm. Crazy. Gonna take a little bit of damage. Gonna try to lose his orb himself out of there. But NS is the one to get glimpsed back. Wall doesn't land. It's not gonna capture him. And the missiles miss, actually. The homing missile will buy them enough time to chase down this Wisp if they want to actually go for it. Looks like they don't. So VP taking a fantastic engagement there. Now Airman has that Omni Slash, wants to use it. Such an early level, using an Omni Slash should mean a kill every time it's available. And Airman picked up a whole lot of kills just by sticking onto his targets. He has like, what, 460 movement speed with everything activated? 471, plus the tether movement speed, which he didn't have last time. He's going to find Pass. Pass is slowed down a little bit by the Ghost. There's the Brain Sap. Omni Slash going to dice him down. That is going to be the end of the Doombringer. So VP getting this Juggernaut a lot of gold. A lot of experience as well. Almost has that level 2 Omni Slash. Possibly pick up two heroes in that. One spell for two heroes. I'll take that. 2300 gold. Airman is getting so amazingly stacked. 620 gold per minute. Could be going for a Mantis style or could just be holding that Yasha. I mean, again, what he really wants right now is just to stick onto Mouse Sports. Mouse Sports have all the silences in the world. He just wants to do that right click damage. And with that level 3 healing ward. 
going to start working on Roshan. And we're not losing any HP thanks to uh, NS's Tranquil Boot usage. As well as that healing ward, of course. Roshan is going to drop the Mouse Sports, none the wiser. I'm sure they know what's going on. There's nothing that could, they can actually do about this unless the call down managed to snipe it down. There's the call down, gonna hit onto everyone. There's gonna be a little bit of damage. There's a stack storm as well as the wall. Airman is in a little bit of trouble with silence, but he's just right clicking black. There's the fiend's grip, but black is going to somehow take him down. No, Rupert with the fade ball does the job. Now here's the doom coming in. Crazy's going to get doomed. He's going to get blended down. Airman trying to kill as many people as he can. But again, that Blade Fury only level 1, so it didn't really do all that much. VP losing 3, Puck buying back, and Airman is going to try to fight his way out of this. He's going to go as much as he can. Crazy is back into the spike, and the phase shift himself out just for just a, little bit, uh, just a moment. Pass with that Satter Blast is going to pick up 1. Here comes the Wisp. No, their Wisp actually left. He's going to come right back into the clutches of Mouse Sports. And that's got to run. Crazy going to die for a second time. Atsy looking for a glimpse already. has used his glimpse, actually. Field is going to miss, and the Wisp is going to slip away. So BP getting caught out just a little bit right there. Juggernaut, with the build that he's going, he's not really prepared to take a big 5-on-5 five five rumble. You know, the fight over here was successful because Mouse Sports, they were all trying to get away. Their positioning wasn't as a team. They were all very scattered. That meant that Juggernaut had enough time to chase each one down individually and get the kills. But in such a situation where Mouse are all grouped up, and Juggernaut, I mean, he's he's decently tanky. He now does have an ultimate orb. But he just doesn't do enough damage because he's uh, very much so an individual based hero right now. At least that's how he's building it. NS, they take a lot of damage from that call down. This is going to fly out into the main element as well. There's the Omni Slash, killing one instantly. Unfortunately, not bouncing to the Doom. That would have been another. The Rubik getting caught out. Omni Slash, every time it's on cooldown, you want that kill. So Mantis Style is going to be the item of choice for Juggernaut. But uh, VP, they got caught with their pants down just a little bit. I don't think they actually should have fought that. Because Juggernaut, I mean, he's, again, not the strongest right now. The build you're going for this, this Juggernaut build is a hardcore carry Juggernaut build. And you don't want, really want to take fights with that. I mean, Lifestealer has his armlet finished already, and well, that Open Wounds is a pretty good spell. Rage going to also help him to do some heavy damage. Doobringer just laying down the Doom, and those Shockwaves, 125 damage might not seem like much. But you got two or three of those off, and that damage stacks up. And of course, Veda hitting the call down on everyone before the fight even started was absolutely huge. Mid lane tower is going to drop two black. 0-1-3 only on him. But still, he's getting a lot of gold. Starting to catch up to that Juggernaut. And that's Juggernaut who has seven kills. Relocate up to the top lane. Kuroki, you are in a lot of trouble, sir. Kuroki's going to unleash the uh, stolen puck silence. That's not going to be enough. The Wisp Spirit's shredding down the rest of his HP. I believe that was the first relocate gank of the game, actually. They're going to move back towards the bot lane. Try to take this tier 1 tower. But everyone from Mouse Sports moving in. They have their big ultimates up. KSI is going to reveal himself. He's going to nightmare himself. There's the vacuum wall. Only for a little bit, however, Feta can unleash everything he has. Airman taking a sizable chunk of damage, but with that healing ward, he should be absolutely fine. KSI gonna find a brain sap before he dies. Black gonna get Fiend's Grip. Airman gonna open up on him very, very strong. Atsy from the other side, just unleashing every single thing he has. Connect Field is up once again. Black gonna get stunned for a little bit more, but Airman doesn't have enough damage to do Black in. Actually, he does with the help of Puck. Now Feta's gonna come in with that Rocket Barrage. Crazy though, gonna pop off some illusions. Should be fine. Atsy gonna get backing back into the clutches of Airman. Should be enough damage to take him down as well. Kuroki gonna get a lift onto Airman, but Illusion Orb gonna fly through once again. Is he gonna jump in on this? Yes, he is. Gonna go straight for Kuroki. The Illusion's doing some sizable damage there. One more right click will kill the Rubik. There he goes. Omni Slash now hitting mostly on creeps, but now the creep wave is dead. Doomringer, you're without support. I guess that kind of works. Use the Omni Slash, kill the creeps, then kill the Doombringer when he doesn't have any creep support. Sure, why not? One more left. It is Fade. I thought he escaped, but apparently he is in a lot of trouble. Call down. Going to be dodged first by Puck. Airman is going to dodge all of them as well. Fade is slowly getting shredded down by that level 1 Blade Fury, but no. Crazy actually stuck. The healing ward is going to drop. And Airman pops the phase boots to get through the Puck and get that last click on the Gyrocopter. So Mavs Sports, Bleeding Heroes, VP doing exactly what they need to do. Get the aggression early on. Pour on the aggression and don't stop pouring on the aggression. Just, you know, douse the enemy team with aggression. And that's working, because the Gyrocopter isn't doing enough damage. He's purely relying on his Rocket Barrage as well as Call Down. He's not going to get any right-click damage for a long time. Lifestealer getting denied by that Fiend's Grip and Doombringer. I mean, yes, he's tanky, but he actually doesn't do enough damage, at least compared to the right-click coming out from Airman. 
Now Kuroki might be in a little trouble. There's the Nightmare from the top side. KSI is going to set up that kill. Going to brain sap the rest of Kuroki's HP as well. Tier 2 Tower is now going to get dropped past. Looking to get in on this. He does have Doom, but he doesn't have any support. Atsy's going to come around, but two teleportations coming in. They might want to fight this. There's the wall, however. And Silence is going to miss on everyone. Everyone's going to get glimpsed back into this, and he's going to drop. No man style, no items, no uh, nothing. Black is going to get Fiend's Grip, but he's all in the rage form, so he's not going to take any damage from that. Dream Coil is on everyone, so that's going to slow him down. And KSI looks like he's going to be the sacrificial lamb. Going to try to bring down Atsy before he himself does go down. Unsuccessful in doing so, but by sacrificing himself like that, he ensures that everyone else on his team gets away. The important thing is that VP took that tower. Lost Juggernaut, yes. Juggernaut is, uh, I mean, he's going to be out of the game for another 20 seconds, but once he gets that, once he gets back, he's going to teleport to the top lane, get a little bit more farm going. Then VP probably going to look towards the uh, next objective, which is the tier 2 mid tower. Once they have their ultimates up, of course, it's going to be in about a minute. So in a minute, they're going to uh, just pour on the aggression towards that mid tower. By doing this, they force the lifestealer to get in these fights. They force the gyrocopter to get into these fights. They force the Doombringer to get into these fights as well. And all three of these heroes don't want to fight right now. They, two of them have hand of Midas, hands of Midas. That means that they want to just farm. Because if this game goes longer and longer, the Life Slayer is going to get more powerful, as is the Doom. Whereas the Juggernaut is going to start to lose some of his potency. So Mouse Sports, they just want to protect all the towers that they could possibly protect. But every time they do protect these towers, I mean, generally they're not taking good fights when that happens. But VP, where are their ultimate timers? Five seconds, that is up, that is up. Everything's up for them. So it looks like the objective is going to be the bot lane. Dark is still on top, does have his mech up. And Mouse Sports, where are the big team fight items for them? There's no mech, there's no pipe. They do have a Vlad's, which I guess will help Lifestealer a little bit. Really, BP, they're gonna, they're doing exactly what they need to do. Even BKB going up on the Bane Elemental, nothing will go through that. The bot lane is slowly getting pushed out. Crazy on the high ground, does have a Blink Dagger up, so he's looking for initiation. Black might be the target. Now, VP gonna back up just a little bit. Tethered up, relocation, looking for a target. It is going to be the tier 2 mid tower. Santa taking the charge on that one. Relocate is prepped and ready. So we're just waiting for the initiation now. It's going to be most likely Puck if VP initiate. Otherwise, for Mouse Sports, it's going to be Black opening up with the Open Wounds, and then Doom, and Call Down, all that painful goodness. Here comes the Missile. Probably not going to be the uh, initiation of choice, because it doesn't really work. And while VP are okay just sitting here, they're getting the Creep Wave demolished. They're even getting a couple of easy camps. Doom onto Airman. That's going to open this up as well as a glimpse. Airman in a ton of trouble. The call down is going to shred his life points. There he goes. But Crazy is going to dive right in for Kuroki. Kuroki is going to live at a sliver of HP thanks to his magic stick charge. Santa in a little bit of trouble from Black. But there's the Fiend's Grip from KSI. Black going to pull everyone in with that vacuum. Here comes the relocate as well. The Omni Slash going to unleash. But is it going to be enough to actually kill anyone? No, it is not. Airman not doing enough damage. Cost is still very much alive as is Black. And both try to get themselves out of here. Feta sitting in the middle of everything with that rocket barrage. Going to try to get a kill on the Wisp, but Wisp is going to go back home. Santa, very low HP, and he's going to drop as uh, he's going to survive, actually. In the meantime, Crazy picking up a kill all by himself. Where did he go? He's going to drop to Black and Kuroki. Airman is on the chase. He's not going to be able to catch up. The Maus do successfully defend their Tier 2 tower. They do have the Life Stealer survive that, even though he got the inscripts. Doombringer surviving that also. So all in all, I would say pretty good fight for Mouse Sports. Nailed the Juggernaut to the wall right when that fight started. Using that Doom, using that Glimpse. The Juggernaut could try to fight his way out, but he doesn't do enough damage. At least not enough to withstand that many heroes. So VP, their window is slowly shutting. That's not to say that they're incapable of taking a fight, but I mean, Juggernaut unleashed his Omni Slash on three heroes and really didn't do noticeable damage to any one of them. You go for a Mant style, you don't exactly go for a whole lot of right click damage. Mant style doesn't exactly give that much, but 26 damage is what you get from Mant style. 
Yeah, that's not impressive at all. Juggernaut, if you want to actually kill things, you gotta get some damage. I mean, the Mantis style is gonna help a little bit, but only a very little bit, because if you get doomed, then there's not gonna be a chance for you to Mantis style. Unfortunately, you cannot split out of Doom. Juggernaut, I would have liked to see him hold the Asha, get something like a Shadow Blade for a little more damage. That's not actually going to happen. A little bit too late for that. Fiend's Grip even stolen by Rubik. Probably was a little bit of a tool used in killing off Crazy, but... Levitate, Shin is going to go down. Everything's being dropped down. Atsia with Static Storm, which is heavy damage to Santa, as well as KSI. Call down, bringing everyone very low, but not actually killing anyone just yet. Airman is doomed up, and Santa's going to drop to the Rockets. Black is going to come in as well for that Bane Elemental. Now relocate out, so relocate in actually, so it's going to you know, yank them out. Maz losing the Rubik once again, but in exchange for both the Darkseer and Bane, yes, they will take that. Now they got to get to this top lane where Airman does have his Omni Slash. They got to be careful about teleporting in one at a time. I was going to take a little bit of damage, but with the movement speed that Airman has, max movement speed actually with that tether, he's going to be just fine. Atsy looking for a glimpse, but <laughs> these two heroes are long gone. Look at this movement speed from Juggernaut. He's going to spin and teleport himself out of there, just to be safe. Smoke now from VP. These three heroes actually cannot kill someone. <laughs> Unless they find the Rubik again. They can kill the Rubik. Yes, sir, they can kill the Rubik. The Black went for an Orchid. More silences. Wow. You never see Orchid on the Life Stealer. That is a very interesting item choice, but it's a very appropriate item choice. Once again, Doom shuts down Airman pretty hard, and after that. You just gotta clean up the rest of their, uh, the rest of the VP squad. And all those heroes are reliant on spells. Vacuum wall only catching on to pass. The call down doing some pretty heavy damage to Santa. However, Illusory Orb gonna fly through. Beta already very low on HP. Should drop to this one. And Airman just in the middle of everything, spinning everyone down. The man style does get split, and now he's gonna go for Kroki. Those are three down for Maus already. Black on the run. Doombringer on the run. Black is going to rage TP out of this. Nothing to actually interrupt it, and the damage is not enough. Pass. Just gonna walk himself out of there. VP this time taking a good fight. Eliminating the Gyrocopter before he has a, a whole lot of chance to uh, unleash Flat Cannon or Rocket Barrage. Low cooldown on that spell. That is going to be the Roshan. Juggernaut going to go for Eagle Song, which is inevitably going to turn into a Butterfly. The Roshan does drop to VP. So this, as I said before, the window is slowly closing, but it is not yet closed. Pass. Going to try to go for the Puck by himself. No, Puck is going to bring in some support. With, uh, the Wisp is actually going to bring in some support. With Airman, Black Armlet toggling. Will he have enough to get out of this? It's going to be close. He will have enough, it looks like, but the Omni Slash can entice down the Rubik. A little bit of an innocent bystander. He he just wanted to help out, man. He just wanted to see what was going on. The Omni Slash takes no prisoners. But yeah, Black, I, I don't know about this Orchid pickup. I mean, yes, it's going to be useful for killing the Bane Elemental and really everyone from VP, but. Uh, the right click damage is going to be lacking. It doesn't really add all that much compared to what you usually see from life stealers, which is, you know, the desolator, the AC. More direct damage items, whereas life stealer, eh, well, we'll see. I mean, Orchid isn't exactly a bad item if you want to do damage. That's why Clinks usually goes for Orchid. So if Black could find someone all by themselves, then he could take him down easy peasy. But in the middle of the fight, I don't know. They have to. Mouseports have to split up their silences very, very efficiently. They've been doing so. They've been doing so so far. They have the Doom on Airman, and they have you know everything else on pretty much everyone else. But really, they just got to watch out for this Juggernaut because he, now he's going to start to build some damage. Get that agility going from the Butterfly. That agility is all going to funnel into his Mantis style illusions as well. Mouseport, they have to keep their spacing. They have to have Life Sealer and Doombringer in the front. They have to keep people in that kinetic field with that static storm on top of them. Call down as well. Such integral team fight spells for mouse sports. And VP with the mobility they have, well, it's going to be very easy for them to get around those types of situations. Just have Puck, Blink in, Illusory Orb out, all that good stuff. Wisp bringing in the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut can actually just spin through the kinetic field if he gets the spin off before he gets doomed. So if Mouse Sports gets the initiation, it's going to be uh, pretty good for them. Get the Doom on the Juggernaut before anything dangerous comes out of him. But VP, uh, they get initiation just as easily, and it'll be just as deadly, if not more so. Now, pause, so let's...
take this pause to go over the uh, very even game that we have now. A little bit more than 5,000 gold advantage for VP with such a huge kill lead. EXP a little bit more. But VP is still a little bit ahead. Problem is that Mao Sports still building up their late game. And VP's late game is being built up a little bit as well. KSI going to find a Fiend's Grip on the Fader relocation coming in. It's going to be Airman as well as the Wisp. Black is also in a lot of trouble. Stunned up initially by the Tether, and that's enough for two swipes. Bringing down that hero. He's going to buy back, but now the Tier 3s are in danger. Fortification going to pop off. The walls are already used, and Mouse Force, they don't have their call down, but they do have all their other ultimates. And now Glimpse back. It's going to be no one, because it was dodged. Beautiful play by the puck, and now Airman going to go right in, but he gets doomed. Airman is going to drop. There goes the Aegis of the Immortal. Did you not? Can they actually kill him again? Do they have any more disables? They do not. Split is going to happen. There's the Shiva's Guard, but the Omni Slash already taking down one. Going to take down another as well. Now Atsian Pass on the run. Airman going to get a surge forward. As Crazy blinks in as well. Level death, a little bit of damage onto Crazy, but now the Tier 3 tower is once again vulnerable. Airman dropping down that healing ward. Everyone is so very healthy. Praxis are going to drop. Disruptor and Doombringer don't actually have enough to stop this, and look how fast Juggernaut's attacking. That is absurd. 0.5 seconds per attack? Yeah, that'll shred the towers. Bottom racks is completely carved out. Santa in a little bit of trouble. He's gonna blink out though. Everyone has a blink dagger. The mobility from VP is astounding. Call down. Can do a little bit of damage to Crazy, but not that much damage. Glimpse is not, once again not available. Crazy getting illusory, or illusory orb himself out. Mech gets popped off, and they're all very, very healthy. Teleportation back, and now VP. They're simply going to fall back, wait for their opportunities, wait for their ultimates. Another 50 seconds till the Omni Slash. Fiend's Grip is going to be up. Relocate will be up. Darkster Wall is already up. So once this Omni Slash gets up, and that's going to be another push, possibly towards this Tier 2 mid tower, possibly just straight towards the top lane. Force Mouse Sports to defend both the bottom and top fronts. That sort of uh, demand is going to be very pressing on to Mouse Sports. They need all five to fight. Every single hero does their job. Rubik with that telekinesis. One of the most important, actually. Just because it is a, a direct disable. Pass has picked up this Shiva's Guard, which is going to help him quite a bit versus the Juggernaut. He does have 1500 HP, which isn't the most. But the armor that he has is going to help a lot because, you know, you saw how fast Juggernaut was attacking. If you could slow that down with Shiva's Guard aura, hey, every little bit counts. Now we do have a smoke from Mouse Sports. They're going to be looking towards the top lane. But I sh think VP should be aware that this is happening. I mean, no one's on this bot lane. It's slowly going to be pushed out. So Mouse Sports only have a very small window of opportunity. And looks like that window is going to result in dividends. It's going to be KSI. It looks like, no, they spot out black. What the, what the where are you going, guys? There's, there's, there's people to kill here. They want to go for the top lane where NS and Airmen are farming. Or put down, put down some aggressive wards, but both teams know that the smoke is happening. Can Kuroki use this smoke and actually spot out where Airman is, as well as NS? It's going to be close. The smoke is already down, though. Looks like it's going to be a backdoor on the Tier 1 tower. Fortification going to slow that down, but this Tier 1 tower is dead. Teleportation support's going to come in, but it's instantly going to get glimpsed back. Static Storm. Oh, Puck's actually in there. Crazy's in a lot of trouble. He's going to get lifted up into the air, and he's demolished. Puck, I think he was supposed to cancel that TP. But in the meantime, bot lane getting completely pushed in. Tier 2 in the mid tower, and oh, here comes the Wisp. Going to get an Omni Slash onto Kuroki. Kind of a wasted Omni Slash. Kuroki's not exactly a tanky hero. You kill him with, like, two hits. Now Fiend's Grip, but instantly canceled by that level death mini stun. The wall is going to go up, as is the call down. Airman going to come in, but he instantly gets doomed. Beta popping off his BKB, going to do all the rocket barrage damage to Airman. Airman is going to drop black on the chase now. Does have two seconds until his uh, open wounds is up. NS on the run. The Shiva's Guard going to slow him down. He's going to drop to the Doombringer as well as the Garocopter. And the Darkseer now is on the run from black. The Surge is going to save him, at least for now. Four down for BP. That was no Omni Slash. That was an instant doom from Pass onto the Juggernaut. Now Mouse Sports, they're going to push down the mid lane just a little bit. Disruptor, the only one to defend this bottom lane, but he'll just pull the creeps into the fountain. Should be fine. Actually, where is Black going? Black just going to keep farming. They don't even want to get this tower. Darkseer's the only one alive, and they still don't want to take that tier 2 tower. It was very easy. <laughs> Black could open that tower up in like three seconds. 
just claw it down, check out the architectural design from the inside, if you know what I mean. Gyrocopter is now starting to build some damage. Has had his Black King bar from in the fight. Now he's going to get some Demon Edge damage. And VP, once again, they're, the rest of their heroes are pretty soft. Bandit Muscle is rushing up a BKB. Yes, it's going to help him because his Fiend's Grip got cancelled off instantly last time. Buck has a Sheep Stick as well. Once this damage starts to flow, I don't know. It's going to be dangerous. Mouse Sports down to racks, so they're still behind. But the thing is, they have the tools to come back into this game. VP, it's up to them to actually f close this game out. Ten seconds up until the Omni Slash, and everything else is ready. Possibly they're just waiting for another Roshan. Another two minutes until that happens. Get a double life onto Airman. So even if he does get doomed, he's just going to come right back and, you know, kill everything with his Omni Slash. What I really would like to see from Mouse Sports is a Necro Book pickup. Possibly on the Doombringer. He's pretty tanky as well, and Necrobook would make him even more so. And those uh, Necro units, if they even take one hit from the Omni Slash, it'll be worth it. Either that or they could. Oh, Black gonna get Fiend's Grip in the mid lane. Santa and Crazy also here. Croaky going to steal the Fiend's Grip. Call down on Santa as well as KSI. Fiend's Grip stolen. Gonna be used on Santa. The Omni Slash is going to kill off Kuroki. That's about it. Airman is doomed up and Black just standing his ground. Brains out, not enough to kill him. Infest going to annihilate him as well as the rest of the Creep Wave. Black, stunned up just a little bit, does have armor toggle available to him. Where's the open wounds? He's gonna open up onto Crazy. In the meantime, Gyrocopter has picked up one. Airman's gonna buy back right into this game. Beta is stuck in a corner. He's gonna drop to Black. And Crazy actually has got himself out of that sick situation. Pass on the run is going to get himself out as well. Now Airman getting a glimpse back, trying to save himself, but it's not gonna be in time. Juggernaut with one last right click. Kills the disruptor. Now only Lifesteal as well as the Doombringer are in this game. VP still with four, no ultimates available, but this shouldn't really matter. Tier two at least is gonna drop. Tier three is also gonna take a little bit of heat. Rubik is gonna be up, but 45 seconds until this gyrocopter's up, and they also need the static storm in 30. This tier two is gonna drop. They do have fortification, so the uh, tier three should survive, I wanna say. Once again, though, they gotta be really careful. 50 seconds until the doom's up, so now sports, they're very, very weak right now. They're both gonna fly out, Shiva's as well. Telekinesis is just going to bring Darkseer back for a little bit of damage, but the mech pops off. Sheepstick used on black. The tier 3 tower does stand. Everyone from VP going to back up, go straight for Roshan. Up in another 30 seconds, so going to farm the jungle a little bit, farm the ancients. Mouse sports, you can bet that they know the timer of this Roshan. They're going to go straight towards it. They will have most of their ultimates up. Doombringer should have his ultimate by the time Roshan. No, it's not going to be up. Gyrocopter is a little bit far behind as well. Roshan is going to drop. The damage that Juggernaut's putting out is astounding. What does he have actually right now? Just the butterfly. So nothing additional, but he does have 3,600 gold on him. Cheese and Aegis onto this Juggernaut. They really want this guy to stay alive. But really, it's all it's all going to be about that Aegis. Because if you get doomed, then most likely you're going to burn the Aegis. And then if you get killed beforehand, then you uh, before, then you're screwed. Because the cheese isn't going to help. So the cheese actually does get passed on to Darks here. And now we have a straight push in the mid lane. VP, they have all their spells up, but then again, so do Maus. If Maus, sport, if Maus fights this in uh, on their own terms, they're going to win this fight. If VP, though, catch out someone with an Omni Slash, possibly Feta, that could be possibly fatal. Haha. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Fade Bolt, Lightning Strike. Gonna thin out that Creep Wave, and the bot lane's pushing in. So VP probably just going to wait for another 30 seconds and then make another go at this. Juggernaut with the attack speed that he has now has a Basher. A very, very smart pickup. Lifestealer will not, his magic community will not save him versus the Basher. Then again, Juggernaut, that Basher will only work if he gets a chance to attack. Doombringer is making a good job, doing a good job of making sure that doesn't happen. Fiend's Grip, looking for an opening. Call down is going to happen onto the Creep Wave. Try to thin that out a little bit. Creep Wave still alive. Kinetic Field is going to go up. Airman is going to still go through that tower. Where's the initiation? There's Doom onto Airman, and Airman taking a ton of damage. There he goes, the Aegis of the Immortal is gone. Black opening up onto Crazy, but he's going to get uh, nightmared by his friendly Bane Elemental. Now Black is Fiend's Grip Wall, as well as Vacuum onto 3, and Atz is going to get shredded down by the Juggernaut, and Beta taking a lot of damage as well. Black trying to fight his way out, but it's not going to be enough. 
even with the wall stolen, it's not going to be enough. Black is going to drop. He instantly buys back. Pot's still alive in this fight, but he can't actually do much right quick damage. He's going to drop as well. VP just farming the mouse quartz. Hero is crazy. Still alive. But he's going to lift him to the air. He should drop. The phase shift going to save him just for a little bit more. Black, once again, on the front lines, but he is stuck with all these illusions. He's going to get dropped. The Basher doing work. Triple kill for Airman. Sh Shiva's guard going to fly out one more time. The Juggernaut just shredding through everyone. That Basher perma bashing people. Pass is going to drop. Rampage going to be he, I, what I feel is going to be the ending stroke for this game. Mid lane has been completely busted open. Rubik is the only one alive and Mouse Sports looks like they are on their last legs. This damage is attack speed most importantly coming out from this Juggernaut with that overcharge from the Wisp. That is Permabash right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has a cooldown. But when you're attacking that fast you're going to bash people and that's exactly what he did. So that's going to be it guys. Mouse Sports are going to lose Two mega creeps. VP playing the uh, very aggressive role. You know, once their ultimates are up, you go and push. And you force mouse sports into a position where their heroes don't have enough. That is how you win the game. Use that Omni Slash as soon as it's up. And, uh, well, do this. What are you buying? You're actually buying nothing because you might die right now. Call down. Plus Rocket Barrage onto Airman. Airman's gonna drop. He's actually got dropped from the fountain. Oh, he's gonna survive. Run, Airman, run. Oh, that's not gonna be enough. The mega creeps are already up, and that's, that's a little bit too much for Maz to handle. They're picking up a couple heroes here and there, but uh, it's mostly just a final blaze of glory. You know, take everyone down before you go down yourself. Skyrocopt is actually pretty good at killing off mega creeps, but he cannot actually withstand the mega creeps plus everything else. Wall of Repka actually doing a lot of work distracting the uh, Juggernaut with his, from his Omni Slash procs. But that is going pretty much it. The wall right in the middle of the mouse sports fountain. Black. Gonna try to kill KSI. Gonna get him. GG still not being called, but mouse sports, they have their entire base breached. Are you kidding, KSI? Are you kidding? <laughs> He's just trying to get the enemy team out of this game. Beta is not amused. Run, crazy. Run. You're, you could get. No, you can't. And they held their base. Okay, now we have the BM coming out. So, even though Mass Sports technically haven't called GG, they cannot come back from this. They just cannot. The only one who could actually hold out these mega creeps is Beta with that uh, rocket barrage. With that uh, flat cannon, I'm sorry. And if they don't have him in the front lines when the rest of the team is pushing, then they're not going to win a fight. <laughs> Good, we have to wait five minutes for O'Shawn. Uh, I'm assuming these guys are on good terms with each other. In Mass Sports and VP, they have some very, very strong teams, and most of the strong teams are pretty uh, close with each other. Mass Sports being German and VP being uh, mostly Russian, one, uh, one non-Russian. I want to say, like, where is Navi from? You know, Ukraine? One from there? I don't know actually who that is. Oh my god, if these guys seriously wait for Roshan, this game is over. There's nothing in their base. The Ancient's wide open. Oh my god, they're actually going to do this. Oh my god. You know, fuck it. This game is over. There is no way for them to actually come back from this. They're making a wall of sentries. Everything's over. Come on. Mouse Sports, why you BMs? Why you BMing? Everyone's dying on Mouse Sports. Everything. There we go. So I'm, I apologize if you wanted to see that fight, but, you know, the game is already over. So thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mouse Sports vs. VP. Game 1 in the best of 3 between these two teams. VP taking this. Let's move on to the second game. GG, guys.